So we're a partial ways there to being able to control our Raspberry Pi completely uh, from a remote location, meaning that I can access everything from my Mac computer, for instance, like this computer right here. I don't even have to be on the network. So we'll first go ahead and do another port scan to um, identify the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. And again, I'm doing that by typing in nmap, which is the application that we'll be using to execute the port scan, followed by the IP address and some ranges. So we'll be scanning 256 different IP addresses on port 80. Just wait a second for this to execute. And there we go, we're done. And we see that the one that we need is right here. It's on port, uh, it's on, sorry, the IP address is uh, 192.168.1.113, sweet. So now instead of being on the Mac, I can just do this in a Linux terminal, it's all the same. I'll create an SSH connection with that IP address I just uh, got right now, but I'll pass in the username, and by default it's going to be pi, and the password is, it's a secret, I can't tell you. There we go. Anyways, uh, the next command that we're going to need to go ahead and execute is, um, we'll do this as a super user, sudo raspy.config, and what this is going to do is, open up a configuration file that um, comes pre-installed on the Raspberry and you know since it's um, I'll assume this is your first time messing with the Raspberry Pi so we'll expand the file system um, so like for instance if I had a, which I have right now a 32 gigabyte SD card uh, I can actually use everything on that SD card now for this Raspberry Pi operating system so I expanded the file system I already changed my user password, but we'll go ahead and do it again. I'll enter in a new password, and I highly suggest you do this because uh, the default password is really insecure. Everybody knows it, you know. And we can even overclock, but we'll talk about that later. It just speeds up the CPU. But what we want to ensure is that we go down to SSH, and we want to make sure that it's enabled. So it's enabled, cool. And um. Yeah, we need to since we did actually, uh, you know, expand the file system. It's gonna need to do a reboot. So I'll let it reboot real quick and wait a few seconds, and I'll try to SSH it once again. It's asking for the password. Enter in that password that I just created, and once again, we're back in the shell. So now what we need to do is actually update, <coughs> update our Raspberry Pi. So we'll do sudo apt get and then update. And this may take a little bit, so just let it update, give it all the time that it needs to. So once it updates, it doesn't actually install anything. Um, we need to actually run another command, which is sudo apt get upgrade. Now this will actually do the installations for those updates that we just received. Two thousand years later, six and a half hours later, a few inches later, Day two, day three, day four, a few moments later. Okay, in all seriousness, that kind of did take a long time. And that's okay, because when you think about it, we just updated an operating system. So, you know, it's going to take a while. But we can go ahead and clear the screen by either typing in clear or just pushing in control L. Now, I already did it here. Uh, I guess I'm skipping ahead a little bit. But what we need to do is go ahead and install a couple of applications by typing in or passing in the sudo apt get install command, followed, excuse me, followed by the application name. So in this case, we need an application called XRDP. And give it a little bit. Um, I've already installed it, so it's going to be a lot quicker than it might be uh, than it might take on your system for that argument to execute. As well, I'll pass in sudo apt get type vnc server. Um, I, sorry, I didn't pass in the install right here. So it's important that you get every single argument correct, and then. I'm already in this um, directory, but we'll do cd.config or config, 
So it's saying that it doesn't see any directory called cd.config because I'm already in that directory, but if I, oh boy, messing things up guys, but I was there, so hold up, ls, cd, pi, uh, ls, now, I guess this is a good, a good learning phase because I was going to talk about this anyways. So in this .config file right here that we see, um, why is there a period before the directory name? I've never really seen that. Right? True or false? Well, what a period signifies in front of a file name or a directory name is that it is usually list, uh, unlisted. It's a hidden file or it's a hidden directory. And the reason being is because these files or these directories usually hold um, configuration information. So you don't really want the average person being able to go into these files and being able to edit them. So the uh, operating system or whoever created these files, uh, you know, initialize them as hidden. But if I pass in an ls-a uh, command, then that'll allow us to view hidden files. And so we can see these dot whatever files. And so by doing that, we're able to um, view them. Because if we did ls look, we can't see those files normally. But now I'll do cd.config. And we're in the config directory. Now what I'll do is I'll do I'll make a directory. I'm just gonna pass in the sudo command just in case. sudo make dir and auto start. So I created this directory called auto start, and then I'm gonna go inside of this auto start directory. And then I'm gonna actually create a new file. So I'll pass in the text editor that we'll use. In this case, it's nano, which is a very basic text editor. And then the file name that I want to create. So I'll create a file called typevnc.desktop. Now with this extension here, we're signifying that we want to put this in the start menu and we're gonna be, we're gonna be creating a special type of file. So I'll start everything off by first in brackets typing in desktop entry. This is necessary in order for your desktop to understand the file correctly. Okay, so once we pass that in, we'll go to the new line, and then type is equal to an application, specifying that this file is of type application. Go to a new line, and then we'll name it type vnc, and this should be pretty self-explanatory, just giving a name to it. We'll then put in execute or exec is equal to bnc viewer, and this is the command that starts the program from the shell. And then oh, I didn't type that in. Thank you guys for telling me. Start up notify is equal to false, and this is pretty much saying that we don't want it. Uh, we don't want this application to shout at us once it's started. You know how sometimes you see applications bouncing or stuff like that in the dock? Well, well, we don't need to know anything about it once it's started. It's all good. So we'll pass in these... Um, we'll just pass in this text right here, and then I'll push Control-O to save the file. It's going to ask us if we want to write over. So I messed up very big time right now, guys, and I was trying to, um, it's another learning thing right there. If I do ls, we can see that there is no file that I just created. That's because I did nano without passing in the sudo command first. So sometimes in order to save uh, files, especially in hidden folders, you're going to need a different permission you're going to need the super user permission. So I'll go ahead and do all that again. So again, I'll push control O to save it and write it. And this time I wasn't um, told that I didn't have, you know, I didn't have sufficient permissions. So if I go ahead and push LS, there indeed is the file that I did. And just like that, we're pretty much done, guys. Now let's just uh, change directory to the home slash pi directory. And now I'll run the application type VNC server. It's going to say I need a password to access my desktop. So uh, I'll just enter in a password. And it's going to truncate it because the password I'm typing in is too long. And I'm very bad at typing. So 
I have to do it again. No. No. Just like that, I've created on my Raspberry Pi the VNC connection, and now let's finally install it on my computer and get this done with. So I'll type in VNC Viewer Mac because I do have a Mac. I will download it right here. Now, all I need is this VNC Viewer 64 bit because that's what my machine is. But, anyways, you're going to want to download it. Um, you can pass in fake stuff here. The email it doesn't really matter. Let's just get this done with and download it because I want to mess with my Pi. I've accepted the terms and the conditions, blah, 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 blah. But I've already installed that. So once you have the program, go ahead and open it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what I type in here in this field right now, instead of uh, instead of passing in this IP right here, I'll change the IP to whatever I have for the Raspberry Pi. I already know it's 113. Then I'll put a colon and then followed by a one and we'll let it connect. It's going to tell me that the connection isn't secure. That's okay. It's not encrypted. For now, it's fine. Okay. After X amount of time of passing in the correct password, uh, now you see that we have full access and full control of the Raspberry Pi remotely. It doesn't matter that I'm on my Mac. I can see everything as if I actually had access to a keyboard, a screen, and a mouse on my Raspberry Pi. Congratulations, guys.